Welcome to Concepts in Chemistry. In this talk, we will discuss why salt solution conducts electricity but sugar solution doesn't. To start, let's look at the properties of sodium chloride and sucrose. Now, the particle model you see here represents a layer of sodium chloride. Now, as you can see, it consists of dark circles and blue circles. Now, the dark circle depicts chloride ion and the blue circles depict sodium ion. Now, as you can see also, the dark circle has a minus sign on it and the blue circle has a plus sign on it. This just means that the chloride ions are negatively charged and the sodium ions are positively charged. Okay. So, as a result of these positive and negative charges, the ions are held together by a force we call an electrostatic force. Now, let's look at sucrose. Now, sucrose is usually called table sugar, and it is also called a disaccharide. A disaccharide means that it consists of two types of sugar. Now, the first is called glucose, and the second is called fructose. Okay. Now, as you can see, each structure looks complex. So, to make it simpler for us to draw particle models, we are just using circles to represent sucrose molecules. So the yellow circles you see here represents molecules of sucrose. And here we have a pile of sucrose molecules. So I'll just call them pile of sugar molecules. Okay. Now let's compare the particle model of sucrose to the particle model of sodium chloride. Now clearly when you look at the particle model of sodium chloride you notice that it consists of plus and minus ions. But when you look at the particle model of sucrose you notice that it consists of just circles with no plus or minuses. So this means that sucrose molecules consist of neutral sucrose molecules. And sodium chloride units consist of sodium and chloride ions. Okay, so what happens when you add sugar to water or when you add sodium chloride to water? Now, because sodium chloride consists of plus and minus ions, when you add sodium chloride to water, water molecules will start attacking the sodium chloride crystal, pulling apart the sodium and chloride ions. So eventually, your sodium chloride crystal will dissolve into pieces, and these pieces are the sodium and chloride ions. Okay. Now, when sucrose is added to water, basically what happens is that the sucrose molecules dissolve as neutral sucrose molecules because the water molecules will start attacking the molecules pulling them apart until all your sugar disintegrates into pieces. So in this case, sucrose will dissolve as neutral sucrose molecules. Okay. So how will the particle model look like? So let's look at a particle model. So here we have the microscopic view and the microscopic view. The microscopic view is just showing you uh, when you add your sugar or your salt to water. So eventually when you add your sugar or salt to water, eventually your sodium chloride or sugar dissolves and disappears into solution. Okay. So at a microscopic level, how do these particles really appear? So let's look at sodium chloride first. So because sodium chloride consists of sodium and chloride ions, that means that the ions would be surrounded by water molecules. So here, the sodium ion, of course, the blue circle represents sodium ion. So the sodium ion is surrounded by water molecules. And the chloride ion also is surrounded by water molecules. Now, these ions are free to move about in solution. Okay. So because they are free to move about in solution, they are able to carry electricity throughout the solution. Now, if we replace the blue circles here with, with sugar molecule, then that means that the sugar molecule will also be surrounded by water molecules. And if you replace the chloride ion here with sugar molecule, that means that sugar molecule will also be surrounded by water molecules. But the fact is that the sugar molecules will not have pluses or minuses, or minuses because they are neutral molecules. Okay, so, so because they are neutral molecules, when you uh, connect the solution to electricity, uh, it wouldn't conduct electricity because these charge carriers aren't present in solution. Okay, so, so let's look at what happens when we connect um, the respective solutions to uh, electricity. So first, let's look at sodium chloride solution, salt solution. Now, because salt solution dissolve as ions, what happens is that the ions before connection, before we connect electricity to the solution, would 
be free to move about in solution. Okay, so these ions will be moving about in solution. But of course, re recall that you have plus and minus ions in there. So yeah, so they'll be moving about in solution. But as soon as we connect electricity to the solution, what happens is that the positive ions will migrate to the negative end. And then the negative ions will migrate to the positive end. Okay, so because of this migration and this charge difference between the two uh, ends, the solution is going to conduct electricity. And it conducts electricity because the plus and minuses are charge carriers. They are able to move to opposite ends of um, the poles and as a result carry electricity throughout the whole solution, which is why salt solution do conduct electricity. But if you uh, replace this plus and minus ions in solution with sugar molecules you notice that sugar molecules because they do not have these charges they can migrate to opposite ends of the pole so as a result they wouldn't be able to conduct electricity okay so because sugar solution dissolves as neutral molecules the neutral molecules are in charge carrier so wouldn't be able to carry electricity in solution but salt solution dissolves as ions so these ions are able to carry electricity throughout the whole solution which is why salt solution conducts electricity but sugar solution doesn't